Growing up in Ada in the 50s and 60s when I did it was kind of a do-it-yourself process. And even then, Ada was the biggest little town on the road to nowhere. That's how they promoted themselves. And so the people who lived in Ada, who had an affinity for the arts, took it very seriously. They were like missionaries. The arts were not easy in Ada. You had to be a fanatic to go through the effort it took to get something going in Ada. So growing up in Ada, I thought that's just the way you did it. You just did it yourself because no one was going to do it for you and you had to find your own places and find the people who thought like you and work together to get things done. The Ninth Street Players got its name from the fact that a bunch of us lived on 9th Street. In the 900 block of 9th Street, we were all college students at the time. And I was in the drama department with Lona and with Stephen Hansford and with Becky Martin. We enjoyed being with each other and working together and um, um, I guess we had, we had a lot of energy and so there needed to be something else for us, something else for us to do with that energy. And so we came up with this idea. So we got together and wrote this proposal. And it was a proposal for a community summer arts program. And it took advantage of several connections we had. I worked for the city already as a librarian at the Ada Public Library. And it was that beautiful building over on 14th Street. And working with me there was Karen Massey. So Gary and I started working at the public library and we're best of friends. Uh, we just, we clicked, we got along. And we became great friends. And so she and I decided we would propose an expansion of the summer reading program to include arts education for little kids. But we thought it was kind of a little bit skimpy because basically the kids came in and checked out books, took them home, brought them back. Gary and I recorded titles on a piece of paper and we gave them a certificate. That's all there was to it. And we just felt like there needed to be something more. So we just kind of started talking about it. And then Stephen and Lona were going to do something for teenagers and they were gonna do a drama workshop on campus at East Central and then mount a production that involved everybody and was open to the community. And so we were going to involve the Ada Community Theater. So we wrote this big proposal and we split up and pitched it to all three groups. Karen and I pitched it to uh, James Cook, who was the city manager for the city of Ada. And then uh, Steve pitched it to Dr. Summers. And then I think Lona pitched it to Ada Community Theater. And they were all very nice and it was very well received, but they all explained that they had already budgeted for the summer and they had their schedules set and they were not going to add anything new and, and they need more lead time than coming to them in January for something that's supposed to happen in June. But Karen and I, talking to Mr. Cook, he bid on it immediately and he said, this is a great idea, I think we should do this. He said, come back and give me a list of your deliverables and, and a budget and what you plan to do and who's gonna do it. And, and we'll take it from there. So we left and we got to thinking about it. Oh my gosh, there's a contract. None of us were 21. You know, so how are we gonna do this? <laughs> so I went down to the courthouse and got an application for a nonprofit corporation and filled it out. And the officers of that nonprofit corporation were Lona Barrick, Karen Massey, Stephen Hansford, and I. And we sent it off and sure enough, a few weeks later, I get these articles of incorporation under the name, the Ninth Street Players. And it was the Ninth Street Players that entered into the contract with the city of Ada. And the, the original plan was we would hold these classes downstairs in the basement of the library. There was classroom space down there. That part of the building got condemned because even in 1970, it was falling down. Well, in the meantime, Karen Massey graduated. And I had already been hired by Ada High School to be their librarian for the fall. So suddenly we had an in with the school system. So we went to the school superintendent and said, we've got this 
contract with the city to do this summer arts program for children. We need a place to do it. Can you help us out? He said, let's put you in the auditorium at Hayes Elementary School because we're going to tear that building down <laughs> and you can't do any harm to it. So we had a place to do it and we had a budget. So of that original proposal, the only part that came through was the children's summer arts program. And the first year we did just the elementary children. We had two sessions. We thought, oh, elementary age, oh, that'll be fine. But then we had five-year-olds and 12-year-olds, and we thought, well, that'll never work. So we split it, and we offered two sections and designed it to be uh, an exploration of all the arts. So we did creative dramatics and creative movement. We did, uh, we did music. We did dance. We did all the stuff that we thought, oh, this, this will be cool. Everyone, anytime we came up with an idea, everybody went, oh, that's wonderful. Here, what can I do to help you just even make this even better? And so that's, that's just kind of the way it was. The head of the East Central Art Department was DJ LaFon, and he had a huge family of children, <laughs> all of whom enrolled. And so suddenly we had his support as well, and the whole art faculty at East Central got involved, and so it was Bob Barker and Robert Sieg and DJ LaFon and their wives and their children. It was the art department at East Central that was so incredibly supportive. Now, DJ LaFon was the chairman of the art department then, and his wife, we were good friends with her because she brought her children to the library every week. And, um, and you know, that summer, Mrs. P, Nell P, who was to taught children's literature at East Central, came in. And they did reader's theater with the kids, and they uh, did some script writing and stuff. And it just grew and grew and grew. Mr. Sieg came, and, and we bleached out a bunch of uh, film, 16-millimeter uh, film, and the kids drew directly on the film and turned it into an animated feature. And we just had the most fun doing that. And they were there to be supportive. We didn't have to say, uh, we need parents to volunteer to come help. We had all the volunteers that we needed. The moms would stay, so we never had a discipline problem. If, if a kid got threw up or, you know, had a nosebleed, there was always a mom there to take care of it for us, and it went really, really smoothly. So about halfway through that June session, the city met to plan their next year's budget because the fiscal year started in July. And we got notified that, hey, not only did we agree to fund July, but we're going to fund next year's program as well. So halfway through the first session of our first program, we found out that we were going to do it again. And so part of our concept was to unify everything in a culminating event so that kids were always working towards something. And so we, did, we planned a festival, and we held it in the new Ada High School that no one had been in before, so it attracted a lot of people. We did an ex kind of an extravaganza art show, and the Ninth Street Players put on a play called the King's Cream Puffs. And we just had the best time just working together. It was timing. It was yeah. people being together at the right time and the right personalities and the right chemistry. And we just had ideas and everybody said, oh, that's great. Now we need to do this again in July. Well, Hayes was not air conditioned and it was a typical Oklahoma summer and we were dying in that big auditorium. So we thought, let's see if we can find a better location. And so we went to what was then known as the Ecumenical Center. And so we went to them and they said, we don't do anything in the summer, we'll pay the bills and you can turn on the air conditioning. So we moved it to campus. All of these uh, professors came back for a second session and Joanne Butler, who taught music education for the schools uh, for East Central would come and, and she did several sessions with the kids with music. And then as part of that culminating activity, we decided as the Ninth Street Players to do something for the students and their families. And so we uh, contacted Tams Whitmark and we got, we were the first cast in Oklahoma to do the musical You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. So we mounted that musical with just the Ninth Street Players to end the first summer arts program. So we got a lot of support from the newspaper and the Nick Myers and, and the Littles and, and the Gurleys and J. Don Cook was the photographer. They just gave us tons 
of coverage. So there was a lot of interest and we announced that we were going to do it again the next year. And so we planned a little more <laughs> during that year. And so the next year was a bigger thing. So the second summer arts program had uh, expanded in ages because we went all the way up through high school and we met in the junior high. The junior high had a, still does, has a very nice stage and an auditorium. So we had some rehearsal space there. And from the very beginning, we knew we were going to end the summer with the musical Oliver. There was a stage down in Wintersmith Park Amphitheater, and the Ada Community Theater had built this the shell around the stage and actually built the stage. So the city agreed to let us use the amphitheater, and they were going to run power down there, and ACT agreed to let us use the shell, but we had to repair it and get it to where it could be used. Ada Community Theater also had a storage building and it was a good place to build the sets and the props and stuff. And while the enthusiasm and the interest was there, they hadn't done shows in, in a few years. So we kind of said, well, if we do a show, can we use Ada Community Theater? And can we use what you have, you know, instead of starting from ground? Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yes, go right ahead. We're glad for you to do that. So the kids in the classes made things for the show. We made the bowls that were used in that workhouse scene, you know, food, glorious food. So those kids made paper mache bowls for that scene. We got all this muslin and the kids did either vegetable stamps or linoleum printing or freehand painting. And they printed or painted all that muslin. And then we turned those into the costumes for the show. But I think what it said to those kids is, we might not have had something, but we said, okay, how can we do this? Um, you know, if you looked at the costumes for um, Oliver, we tie-dyed the least expensive muslin you could. <laughs> and that's how we made costumes. And so how many kids wanted to, wanted to be in that opening scene of Oliver? Well, we just tie-dyed some more muslin and stitched up another costume and put it on the kids <laughs> and said, here we go. We held auditions for that show, and our, our philosophy was a little bit different. If you showed up, you were in the show. And so we had a cast of 85 people, and the average age was 12. We put together an orchestra of kids. Again, it was funded by the city of Ada, and we got a little extra money that year, and we had got a little extra money from the grant from the uh, Oklahoma Arts and Panties Council, who started soliciting us to keep applying because they really liked that program that was going on because it was, it reached so many ages. It was such a community effort. Uh, no one was making any money, you know, so it was a cheap program. I think the first year we did the whole thing for $2,500 and the second year we maybe did 4,000. The third year we did summer arts in Ada. I was teaching in Norman and, and Stephen and Lona were still in town and Karen had gone as well. She was getting her master's degree in Norman. So Karen and I were in Norman and Steve and Lona were still in Ada and they were working for Channel 10. So we designed this different summer arts program and, and <laughs> we got the entire St. Joseph's School campus, including the nuns quarters. And so we had the whole school and the, that auditorium and the nuns' quarters. And so we started bringing in people to Ada, and they would conduct a week-long workshop and live in the nuns' quarters and, and teach the kids. And that was the year we did Camelot. And so we were working on Camelot. All the kids were involved in that. And we were rehearsing it at, the, at St. Joseph's, but we did it at the amphitheater. We had people from OU working with us, and that was big set, big bigger orchestra, everything was bigger. We did week-long classes instead of month-long classes, and you could enroll in as many as you wanted. So now the kids could enroll in eight different classes. Each week was a different subject. The big kids, I conducted a studio class, and so it wasn't as much instruction as it was, you know, let's create together. And then we added a community workshop program, and people from the university conducted workshops for the community. And there was a community choir that also was the, the chorus for Camelot. And Betty Woods conducted that for us. And then DJ LaFon did a, a book binding printing workshop and made this book. 
Orville Robbins and his wife Louise, who became mayor later, did a winemaking workshop for adults, and that got a big response. We did a comparative culture workshop. Orville Robbins was this phenomenal literature teacher, and for some reason he just embraced all of us. So we had the third year, it went all the way from five-year-olds to adults. I tell you all of that because following that year, the Oklahoma Arts and Humanities Council started looking into the possibility of the Oklahoma Arts Institute. Lona and I went and DJ LaFon went and a lot of people from Ada went and they formed this planning committee and they used the model that we had done the third year of summer arts to have it a live-in thing where experts would come for a week, everyone would be real intense, and then they would end with this big mass art experience that everyone was involved in. And so they used that as a model, they designed it, they funded it, it was held at Quartz Mountain. It's still the Quartz Mountain <laughs> program, it still uses that model. And those are all echoes of Ada and echoes of summer arts. And there are a lot more of those echoes that I hear because I heard the original noise when we were here in Ada. The fourth year, it was the workshop format. There were a lot of people coming from other places to conduct things. Most everyone had, of the original Nice Street players, knew it was the last year because we all had started our own careers. We were doing it for nothing. You know, I had my teacher salary and I was crashing on friends' sofas during the summer. And so we came down and did it that final time, knowing it was the final time for the Ninth Street players to do it. And then we all left, except for Stephen Hansford. And he remained in Ada because he was working for Channel 10. And so they launched this big effort to institutionalize the summer arts program. And they wanted to build a facility that would be a permanent home for summer arts and be the umbrella organization for the Ada Community Theater and community arts education. They wanted it to have uh, rehearsal space, performance space, studio space, classroom space, and office space, all under one roof. And they were going to, the grant was for, I think, $300,000, and they were going to raise another $300,000. And then the plan was to staff it and get a development officer and started this continual fundraising effort. And so they spent a year designing that and developing that and we all came back and helped with that a little, and they submitted the grant and it was not funded. And because that process was going on, no one was doing any planning for summer arts after that. And so the whole thing kind of imploded under the weight of the planned expansion. And so it kind of it kind of went away. The moral of the story is, though, that's exactly what the Chickasaw Nation has done in the old Bowie Ballard building with their Chickasaw Nation Arts and hum Humanities Center. It's got gallery space. It's got uh, performance space. It's got studio space. It's got classroom space. There are offices for all the people involved in the arts in the Chickasaw Nation. And for me, knowing that that was the plan in 1975 to see it finally come true. It took more than a village to do it. It took a whole nation to do it, but it's in the village that had the idea. And it, a lot of it was to do with Lona. She helped design that, that facility. And, and it is a model of what a, a unified, coordinated arts expression can be. That Ninth Street player experience, um, gave me a lot of self-confidence and courage to continue to do, um, provide opportunities for, for young people to learn. Everything we were doing was, was worthy. It was worth time, it was worth the energy, it was worth the effort. You could, you saw the end product and you went, wow, that's great. The life I have lived, which, which I have enjoyed, is. Most of that enjoyment comes from the fact that it began here in Ada. And the friendships that were forged uh, through the arts in Ada and with the support of 
the community of Ada and some key individuals who made it their life's mission to make sure I was exposed to what they thought I needed to know and supported in efforts that they thought were worthwhile. Uh, I really appreciate that and it's one of those things you pay forward. One of the ironies of this experience I'm having now is that in the first summer arts program we sent kids out with movie cameras to talk to the old people at the Spit and Whittle Club about what Ada was like in the 30s and 40s. And so now I'm the old guy talking to you young whippersnappers about what Ada was like in the 50s and 60s. And so uh, you'll be talking to somebody about what Ada was like in the 2000s and 2010s. And so it just, it just perpetuates, you know, sunrise, sunset, it goes on. It was, it was a good experience. I'm very thankful for it. it um, I will always have wonderful memories and, and good feelings about Ada even more so because, and I think I probably feel as strongly about Ada as I do because of the Ninth Street players, okay? I didn't just go to East Central and graduate and leave, okay? We, we became so much more involved with the community and what was going on with the community than most college students probably do. But we just thought that's what we were supposed to do. forgot that once there was a spot for one brief shining moment that was known as Summer Arts.